Hello, dear viewers. Don't worry, I haven't gone religious all of a sort. But the title is kind of in reference to the movie I'm going to respond to on this one. And the movie I'm going to respond to in this one is called What Did Jesus Really Look Like? And it was brought out to us by Decoded from MTV. And I thought there's no better way to describe how important the looks of Jesus are according to the Bible. But let's continue and see where this leads us. You can find him on t-shirts, posters, jewelry, dishes. There's even a toaster that will put his face on your bread. And I'm not talking about your favorite pop star. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You mean Che Guevara, right? Well, obviously I know I'm not right, but that would have been a good answer, wouldn't it? I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah, I, I knew that. Obviously, I've seen the movie, but I had to make the Shea joke. I mean, come on. You said not pop star. Shea Guevara, not a pop star, but still on the bread and, and well, you know. What. Regardless of your religious beliefs or what part of the world you're in, chances are you could pick Jesus out of a lineup. Shoulder length, dirty blonde hair, blue eyes, beard, washboard abs of steel. I feel like there's a CrossFit joke in there somewhere. I wouldn't call it a joke. But you are definitely displaying a bias on how you think Jesus looks like. And I'm not even wondering why, because I've seen movies of you. You are a racist, but you pretend you're not, so you probably call it something else. But anyway, how would I describe what Jesus would look like? Well, he could look like this, or this, or these, or... These? Oh, no, 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 wait. That's, that's Doctor Who. Sorry. But this globally recognized version of Jesus didn't come from Bethlehem. This guy's actually a 20th century American. The 1941 Head of Christ painting is the most widely reproduced piece of artwork in world history, making this the most popular Jesus. I know I shouldn't expect anything better, but everything you said in that sentence was wrong. The picture you're showing is a version of Jesus the Sacre Coeur, or the Sacred Heart, um, which there are several versions of, and you're talking about the picture drawn, painted by Warner Selman, the Head of Christ. It's a different picture. Now, that piece of art is not the most reproduced piece of art in the world. Because that honor would go to Queen Elizabeth, or rather her face, or an effigy of her face, which is used on a stamp. Who cares, it's only a stamp? Yeah, that might be true, but that stamp has 320 billion versions of it out there. And all of them, for the last umpteen years, have got the same face, because the Queen liked it, so it's never been changed. Now, if you're going to say, well, yeah, okay, it's, it's art, but it's not a painting. Okay, then there is this Chinese girl, Louis something or other, who had a painting called, uh, now I have to think really loud and I'm bad at it, Mao Zedong goes to Anwan. And that painting is considered to be the most reproduced painting. It has a 900 million reprinting number on it. It's probably higher than that. So, yeah, no, Warren's painting doesn't even come close to that. So, it's, and you're using the wrong picture, and that picture is not the most reproduced art, and it's not the most reproduced painting. So, um, I'm, I'm sorry, what was your point again? So what did Jesus actually look like? Well, the earliest drawings of Jesus and his disciples dates back to 235. In the first images, he was too young for facial hair, but the hair on his head was short and curly. And in the fourth century, Jesus starts popping up in Roman catacombs with short dark hair, a beard, and noticeably melanated skin. Considering that he was born in part of the Roman Empire, which was what we now call Israel, and people there tend not to get born as Germanic-looking European people. I'm not sure why this is surprising to you. 
People have been arguing about Jesus' appearance basically since the beginning of time. The Bible doesn't ever mention Jesus' race, which makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't really give name to any of the races, in all fairness. It strongly suggests or implies that Jesus was born of a Hebrew mother. Um, I'll not mention the father because either it's a Hebrew or it's God. And God's probably not a Hebrew. Um, anyway, so yeah, it implies that Jesus is a Hebrew or a Jew. So there is some implication, but it's not specifically said. You are right. Christianity had to be universal for it to spread, so there was no point in confining him to one race or another. You know, I, I don't like having to defend Christianity because I'm not a Christian. I personally think all religions are stupid, but that being said, no, Christianity did not need him to be white. Not all Christians were white. Don't forget, Christianity came from the Middle East. So there were probably people in the Middle East still Christian, and trust me, most of them will not have been white. But okay, art made in Europe might depict a more white Christ. Because you picture what you have. You base something on what you have. If the whole of the world will in a hundred years be Chinese, there will be a good chance that Christ will become Chinese because people will picture what they have. <sighs> it's, it's you know, art imitating life and all that. It's, read it up somewhere. It, it's probably somewhere on the interwebs. But one of the biggest disputes among theologists had nothing to do with his skin color, but his level of attractiveness. On one hand, a plain and average Jesus would be relatable and non-threatening. But on the other hand, how could a holy savior be anything other than gorgeous? Yeah. No. No. Again, this is how people would make art. Would you make art based on an Adonis, a Greek god-like body, or would you make him like an average person? <sighs> Never mind. In 2001, the BBC TV series Son of God did a facial reconstruction of Jesus using forensic science. Combined with the early artistic portrayals, ethnic traits, and the fashion of the day, the finished product was a dark-skinned, bearded, short-haired Jesus. And this is surprising because... So how did Jesus go from looking like a dark-haired Jewish guy to a white blonde guy? Weren't you surprised a moment ago that there were drawings found in ancient Rome where Jesus was, well, let's, let's say melanin, so dark-skinned as well. So you already knew that this had happened. And you only recognize it now that this has happened? Though the whole story so far is that this has happened. Either you really don't understand this, or you're being very disingenuous. Or maybe you really, really, really don't get it. So, let's try this then. Art imitates life. And for, let's say, the last thousand, fifteen hundred years, most art about Jesus comes from the Western world. So people will take themselves as example. Hence, Jesus got crafted in a more Western European image. Is it justified? No, of course not. But listen, trust me, we are now doing what you might call recreating the face of Jesus. They did not have the technology to do this in the year 700. And if you think they did, then you please bring forth evidence for this. Starting in the Middle Ages, that's somewhere around 476, and especially in the Renaissance, artists began depicting Jesus as white, usually with blue eyes and blondish hair. Yep, art imitating life. How funny it is. Many speculate that the turn was influenced by Bible verses that use lightness to symbolize purity and darkness for sin and evil. On the surface, white or light equaling good and pure, and black or dark equaling evil and bad seems harmless. But when bias gets put in the mix, things get dicey. Yeah, when bias gets in the mix, things get dicey, which is always true.
but bias in this case can be seen as interpretation. And there's a bias in the interpretation, especially because the book that talks about light for good and dark for bad or evil is Isaiah, which is Old Testament, which is not New Testament, so it has nothing to do with uh, Jesus of Nazareth, because he is New Testament, and the Old Testament guys were themselves dark-skinned. Probably not black dark, but definitely Middle Eastern dark. So, no, it's not about the skin color, and no, people in Europe didn't draw a white Jesus Christ because he was light, therefore he was good, and he couldn't be dark because therefore he would have been bad. Because most people in that day and age realized, even then, that people in the Middle Eastern weren't blue-eyed and blonde. Why did they do this? Because art imitates life. Now, it is true that later uh, a lot of Christians used the we are good, you are bad, we are light colored, you are dark colored joke or failure or farce, but more as an excuse to behave like absolute arses than anything else. Medieval Christians didn't like the idea of Jesus being dark-skinned and dark-haired because that meant he looked Jewish. Spoiler alert, he was Jewish. Didn't you at the beginning of this movie said that the race wasn't known? And that, well, Jewish can be seen as a race. I mean, Jewish isn't really a religion. It's actually a race. It's handed down from mother to kid. So, are you now contradicting yourself? Because it does seem that way. Because medieval Christians didn't like Jewish people. In fact, they were actually the first to force them into ghettos, complete with special armbands, both of which were later revived by the Nazis in the 1930s. Yikes. Yeah, you're right. That was bad. They weren't the first, though. Or rather, the Christians were the first, but well before that time and even if you read the bible the christians weren't the first because the egyptians did basically the same never mind that though i mean the bible is just a made-up book anyway so i assume that's why you're not taking the biblical account on how the jews got oppressed and made recognizable but yeah no throughout um, history christianity has been pretty against the Jewish religious people, um, and vice versa, mind you, vice versa. Um, it's kind of funny that modern Christian states call themselves Judo-Christians, Judeo-Christians, sorry, which is uh, trying to combine with Jews. I'm not for it, I'm not against it, it's history, I don't give a fuck. But the funny thing is that... Yeah, there are plenty of examples on how Christians were really, really, really negative towards um, the Jews. The Passion of Christ, which now seems the last since the last few years, seems to be having a whole new group of people interested in it, uh, which is during Easter shown on television and whatnot, is basically one of those stories that sparked a new episode of anti-Semitism. So, yeah, no, it's a terrible thing that this happened. The Christians weren't the first, though. But yeah, it's a terrible thing. That light equals good and dark equals bad idea even carried over into anti-Semitic propaganda. Jewish people were portrayed as dark and menacing with giant noses, darker complexions, and bushy facial hair. And you can't really oppress Jewish people when your own savior looks Jewish. Thus, white Jesus gained more popularity. Dang, girl, you really need to try and read the Bible just once. The Jews gained oppression, not because Jesus was also a Jew, but because the Jews are to blame for the death of Jesus. And this with sin will continue on to the children, etc., etc., etc. Religion is a good bit of nonsense, trust me. But 
yeah, no, Jews can't say Jesus was a Jew, therefore we are all friends. No, because Jesus was shunned by the Jews. They turned away, blah, blah, blah. So, mm, yes, Jesus could have been a Jew, but he stopped being a Jew when he became Christ. <sighs> Seriously, could you could you fact check just just once? It would be so much easier for the rest of the world. But the medieval Christians weren't the only ones to use this new and improved white Jesus to justify oppression. Can anyone say colonialism? Yeah, you had to bring in oppression, and it had to be white guys. Never mind that white guys were oppressed throughout history as well by, for example, African tribes or the Mongols or Arab nations. I mean, you shouldn't forget that most of Spain, for example, was Arab at one state, and uh, the Persians invaded a well bit of Europe as well, and never mind all those things, but yeah, colonialism, boom! Europeans did colonials, um, yeah, and so did Muslims, by the way, at that time. They did it on different areas, but they did so too. Oh, and Chinese did. Also, again, different areas. Oh, fuck! Seems that nearly all great civilizations had a period of colonialism in them. And this has to do with Christianity because... <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess. Reasons. Right? In the 1600s, Catholic missionaries sprung up all over the New World with plans to convert the indigenous people. This conversion included enslavement, forcing many to abandon their native languages and traditions, genocide, and of course, stealing their land. Yeah, after Christianity has done that in Europe and converted all of Europe into Christian states, they couldn't fight amongst one another anymore because the church would kind of be against that. Unless, of course, that country would be excommunicated, which also did happen if you had enough money to pay for excommunicating someone else, or they actually... Nah, never mind, I'm not going into history too much. But at a certain point in time, the European countries were more or less stable in their Christianity, so they looked outward. And when they found new territories, they would try to subjugate the people that lived there. And yes, Christianity was one of the tools used to subjugate people. Not the only one. And again, not only the white people did this, this is what every great empire has done in the past. Why are you blind to this? You do realize that among the great empires, uh, the, 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 the Muslim empires, or the Arab empires, sorry, not Muslim, Arab empires, or the Chinese empires, there have also been great black empires. It's further back in time, though. It's not around the Middle Ages. It's not around 1600, because by then, they weren't the big powers anymore. But if you go back further in time, you will find periods where the black communities, the black societies, were dominating over their neighboring societies. This is history. History moves in waves. Come on. Don't be stupid. Again, we see this narrative of dark-skinned people being bad, thus needing to be tamed or killed in order to conform to this good or white standard. Hello, white supremacy. Hello, idiot. Anyone home? For fuck's sake, it's about people subjugating other people. It's not about white supremacy. Again, this has happened throughout history with different cultures. As I said, Arabs going into Spain, for example. Or, you know what, no, I'm not going to give an extended history lesson. I'm sorry, if you do not see this, then you are blind. Now here's where things get interesting. During slavery, you see two very different versions of Jesus and Christianity spring up. For pro-slavery Christians, converting slaves to Christianity and getting rid of their heathenistic religions and languages was part of their godly mission. Slave owners used religion as a means of control and persuaded slaves to convert with the promise of heaven and spiritual freedom, not to be confused with freedom freedom. But black slave ministers zeroed in on God freeing the slaves from Egypt, not to mention Jesus's persecution 
persecution, execution, and resurrection is a classic good overcoming evil story. And to the horror of slave owners, many slave rebellions were inspired by that very triumph. And despite these very different versions of being a good Christian, the black church became an incredible pillar of the black community. For slaves who had been separated from their families, the church became a new family and a place of refuge, especially post-Civil War. Heck, the civil rights movement was born in black churches. Yeah, I, I know you're not going to like what I'm going to have to say now, but you know, you're partly right. The Christian church was dreadful on slavery or the Catholic church or whatever you want to call it. But no, the first dissenting voices were not black Baptists in America. I mean, if you go as far back as, let's say, the fucking beginning of Christianity in 18, sorry, not 18, haha, stupid me, 185, there was this guy known Origen Adamantius, which was a Christian scholar and theologian who already was a great um, advocate, I think is the best word, of the Jewish practice, which was part of the Old Testament, of freeing slaves after seven years. So you would be a slave for seven years. And if you go further into Christianity, or rather more towards us, if you take, for example, Gregory of Nicaea, or Akakius of Amida, or even Saint Patrick, who used to be a slave himself, they all argued for the abolition of slavery. They didn't advocate slavery, they fought against it. And even the freeing of the minds, so to speak, of black people in America in slavery time wasn't done by black ministers, it was started by white ministers who tried to convert black people into seeing that slavery in itself is not required by God. I don't get don't don't ask me how they came to that conclusion though because the Bible kind of is filled with slavery so but no it weren't the black ministers that started the freeing of slaves. It actually it were well let's let's call them white. White Christians started about how slavery should be abolished. And you know, now that we're on the topic of slavery, yes, we continuously talk about black slaves in America, which is dreadful because every slave is dreadful, but somehow we never talk about Irish slaves in America, and, and they, they used to be a rather large group of slaves as well. So, you know, just throwing it in there. I'm thinking of a Baptist minister with the initials MLK. Ever heard of him? Yeah, this is not my first movie responding to you and I really have a problem believing that you heard of MLK. Mm, maybe you heard of him but definitely not about what he said. Again, look it up. It might be interesting. You should try doing fact checks. It's, it's really better for you. So what does all this mean? Are we saying that Jesus and Christianity are bad because historically too many people have used it to justify terrible things? Absolutely not. Anything can be twisted and abused, especially religion. Yeah, every concept, every idea can be abused. So, for example, the idea that a certain group of people or a certain race of people are more powerful or less powerful, even that can be abused. But then again, you know this, right? But in the same way we try to tackle race and pop culture here, it's important to look at how iconography can also be influenced and shaped for the purpose of oppression. And it's also important to remember that misuse isn't exclusive to any one religion. Today you can see all kinds of depictions of Jesus around the world. There's an Asian version, Native American versions, and tons of artwork with lock sporting black Jesus. There's even a black Jesus TV show. When white oppressive power structures excluded other versions of Jesus' appearance, they were misusing religion to spread discrimination 
discrimination. Now communities across the globe are reclaiming their right to see Jesus however they choose. While a Korean or a black Jesus might not be historically accurate, just like a blonde hair, blue eyed Jesus, people of color have the right to see themselves in their religion, especially after centuries of being taught and forced to worship a God that doesn't look like them. And this is where the title of this video is coming from, because the God is not looking like them. For fuck's sake, read the bloody Bible. You're not allowed to make pictures of God. So why are you now saying, aha, we were being oppressed because we couldn't make pictures of God? Listen, the fact that they did means they were wrong. And all you do now is argue that how, how you want to be a Christian so that you can make the same mistake? That it really? We aren't saying that white people are wrong for wanting to see a Jesus that looks like them, but that historically, white Jesus has been used to oppress and erase the histories of people of color in a way that Korean Jesus or black Jesus has not. Yeah, I, I'm not saying you're a lying bitch, but... Ooh. I, I guess that but kind of explains the point, doesn't it? You can't say something is not this or that and then say but and then explain why it is. Oh, by the way, I do mean you're a lying bitch, by the way. I mean, I was pretty clear on that, wasn't I? You are continuously misrepresenting the reality of the world. Now, have there been back people that have been oppressed? Hell yes. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. Yes, that has happened. Was it done by white people? Partly, yes. Not completely, though. I mean, don't forget the whole slave trade thing. That was such a bad thing for the slaves coming from Africa into uh, America. At the beginning of that slave trade, one black guy captured another black guy and sold it into slavery. So, it's not that the Dutch or the English went into African countries to wrangle up a bit of people. No, they went there and they bought them from the ruling tribes in Africa. And again, I mentioned this earlier in this movie, Irish people were slaves in America too. And not just Irish and the black, I mean, never mind that. Stop being so disingenuous. You are full of... Well, Honestly, we may never know what Jesus really looked like, but whatever you do, don't get me started on White Santa, because this video is already way too long. Yeah, we will never really know what Jesus looked like, just like we will never really know what Hermione Granger looked like, because there are no pictures of them, they are not born, and they never really existed. But hey, who cares, right? As long as we can make an argument over them. And yes, we will not get you started over the white Santa. You know, Santa Claus, the guy based on a Norse god, a Germanic god, who then, when those tribes got subjugated into Christianity, had their traditions replaced with a new Christian tradition. So Saint Nicholas became the new Weihnachtsmann, more or less, and St. Nicholas was a bishop of Myra, which was in the Byzantium Empire, which is now Turkey, so fair to say you probably had a Middle Eastern looking uh, visage, so then he got turned back into a white guy, I think in 1800, um, but yeah, no, let's, let's not go into that one, because... Santa Claus is black too, right? Anyway, this was my response to the movie of MTV Decoded. And I'm not sure, but I kind of did lose my cool a bit because I thought I'd make a funny remark or I made some um, honest, God-fearing truth about this shit. And, well, I did. I mean, none of the things I said weren't true. So, at least that bit I achieved, but it, it did piss me off a bit. The, the false information that they are feeding the population at large 
And it's not true because I say it's true. Don't worry about that. If you can prove me wrong, by all means, please do. I do love criticism. But this is so disingenuous. This is so following a narrative. This is trying to get people to think in a certain way. Damn the truth. And yeah, that pisses me off. Anyway, I hope you liked my movie. As I said, criticism is more than welcome. Uh, drop your comments down below. And to each of you, a good day.